Right, last fight of the night then. Eight two-minute rounds with it back to us. Harry Escott from Sunderland in action against Kid McCauley from Doncaster. Now, Harry Escott never been in a bad fight and come to that, neither has Kid McCauley. He doesn't win a great many, but uh, always fought some good men, that's for sure. Referee Jim Pridding. So Harry Escott then in the white. And I remember him boxing Mehdi Labduni, and uh, Labduni beat him in a close fight. And Labduni also holds a very close win over the reigning WBO featherweight champion, Steve Robinson. So a nice little form line there. Harry Escott, only 21 years of age. Paid me to say that, by the way. Nice snappy little boxer, got some very good wins on that record. Kid McCauley quite capable of mixing it in almost the highest echelons. He's got a very good instinct. And also, Kid McCauley weighing in around out the lightweight limit here. Harry has got in around the super feathers. You don't often see McCauley up around the lightweight. He's normally down in the feathers. So, uh, not quite as fit as he possibly could be, but I don't think that's going to have too much of an effect here over eight twos. Nice body shot there from Harry. He was looked after these days by his father. So he got his nephew here watching. Late night for him, only seven years of age. Nice little left hook from Harry. Bit wide though. Well, that's another bad little opening round there, and I've got to give it to Harry Escott. eight-round show closer, Harry Escott in the white trunks. Looks like he's nicked the first against Kid McCauley, who's coming out now with a little bit more purpose here in the second. And Di Gardner's just about to walk in front of my camera, I think. Di? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> Harry Escott against Kid McCauley then. Eight twos. And uh, say McCauley's got the ability to make life tough for a lot of men. Doesn't win a great deal, but hard to beat. Good pro. Nice little right there from Kid McCauley. Double jab from Harry Escott. First one didn't land, but it was a nice little range finder for the second. And I don't really think that either of these two have got the propensity to stand there and uh, have a real head-to-head -head war. So the combinations are going to be quick, and they're not going to be more than two or three punches at once. Then away again to regroup.
So not a great deal left in this second round and uh, not a great deal to pick between them either. There's the bell, let's call that one even, shall we? Some of the other men that uh, Harry Ascot's mixed it with, Floyd Havard, reigning British champion, Neil Haddock, the former British champion, Eugene Speed, good fighter, Jackie Gungaloos, a South African, good fighter, Kevin Pitchard, former champion. He beat uh, Joey Jacobs, the former British super featherweight champion. Also, Les Walsh. And McCauley, well, he's been with some good men. Elvis Parsley, Barry Jones, Sean Anderson, Paul Lloyd. Tony Foster more recently. Round three then. And uh, round in front, Harry Escott with one even, I think. A left hook there from McCauley. And I think it's got extraordinarily long arms. Very deceptive anyway. A couple of nice little rights there catching Escott. image move there. Well, we've got a waitress, I'm afraid. Oh, well, she's just disappeared again. very good win that uh, Escott had against Rudy Valentino who went on to contest an eliminator for the British lightweight title that was up in uh, Manchester a few years ago now and a crunching punch split Valentino's lip wide open top to bottom There's not been much in this third round. And the bell's coming up. But Harry Escott might just have taken that one. McCauley on his feet, ready for action. Round four. And in spite of the fact that both these men have fought at a very high level, and possibly... Uh, I say possibly Escott at a higher level, but uh, McCauley's box against Donny Hood most recently. And uh, n not many people, well, in fact, if any, stop McCauley. His game is tough, it's tricky.
And now McCauley doing some nice work, both hands. Oh, and then again, a stiff jab from Harry Escott. And this extra four pounds that McCall is carrying is making a bit of a difference here, I, I would say. Again, another close round, this. Looks like one's just about to get his nose in front, and suddenly the other one comes back and closes the gap. Well, let's score that one even. Have you got that Tiger's hand in your mouth? I boxed here last time, and oh, you one here. Ken. I know you did, Ken, but I run him up right, because he lives in Sheffield. Oh, and, um, but if I give you money, you could watch it. Yeah. Did you have it the first time? So he's at the fifth then. It's the halfway stage. Four gone, four to go. And it's, I tell you, it's a difficult fight to pick at the moment. Harry has got possibly got his nose in front, but. Uh, well, Kid McCauley still there. Nice right hand there from Harry. Always was a sharp puncher. And I remember the night he beat uh, Joey Jacobs, as I say, the former British super featherweight champion in Manchester. Oh, again, a big right there from Escott. That one hurt. Well, I'm not going to get the chance to say, I don't think. Escott really starting to turn it on here in this fifth. Well, put it this way, he was absolutely delighted. Good little shot there from a call of the right hand, and again. But this has still been the best round of the fight so far, or the most inclusive round, I should say. And Harry Escott's got his nose in front here. Oh, and again, a big shot there from Harry. Harry Escott, the proverbial chirpy weirsider from Sunderland, trains women boxers in his spare time. Well, so his dad tells me. So, good round there for Harry. That's probably got him two in front now, three to go. Steve, just quick word, oh boy, I've got my uh, time card. <laughs> so 
so into the sixth then. Three to go. Harry has got two in front. And uh, really trying to put some meat on the bones now. McCauley, well, probably realising that uh, Harry Escott's going to unload with the big shots. And he's going to try and cut the gap, cut down the range. Escott there, a little bit frustrated with the miss. And there's been some excellent matchmaking by Ron Gray. I haven't seen a bad fight all night. Well, it looks like Harry's got uh, kids measure in this round six now. Oh, big shot. And I've never known Harry Escott to throw a straight right. He's always looped it like that. And it's not the thing to do, but he seems to get away with it. It lands, and it hurts. And a little bit of a cheeky infringement on the inside there by Harry, but I'm too much of a gentleman to mention what it was. Oh, nice left hook. And again, nice shots there from Escott. Harry Scott must be a real authority on Britain's leading super featherweights. As I say, he's uh, already boxed the current champion, Floyd Havard, and the former champion, Neil Haddock, and another champion, Joey Jacobs. So uh, he knows his super feathers. Another good round there for Harry. That's three in front now, two to go. And it looks like it's all over. Uh, and yes, I think there's going to be a corner of retirement here on behalf of Kid McCauley. Possibly a cut on the right eye. He's got a bit of damage around there. What a pity for Kid McCauley. And there's some lovely punches by Harry Escott. And uh, they possibly don't want to risk him taking any further. And his old man, Harry Hesky, what a nice old fella he is. And you could do a lot worse than have a father like Harry Escott Sr. <laughs> Shame there for Kid McCauley, but a very nice little win for Harry Escott. And that's a, a much needed win as well, I would suggest, for Harry. Let's hope that does his confidence a bit of uh, good. Yep, there's the winner, and I'm sure he would have liked to have won more conclusively than that, but what a shame there for Ken McCauley. Well, that's the end then of a cracking little show here. Yes, late sub. High right too. Hence the weight disparity. And uh, good characters, these guys. Well, that might just go on again. There was uh, not a great deal in the fight. I think Harry was winning the rounds, but not by a great deal. And the uh, <laughs> kid McCauley just kind of check. Yeah, they're both going to go and check because it was so inconclusive. They both want to know who was in front. Jim Brilling saying, well, Harry Ascot had a lead. 
I think uh, it's been a cracking little show here for the Middlesbrough Club in Solihull. 